<laughs> Have you ever needed a bigger radiator? Uh, probably not, but I do. And for reasons I'll explain later, in this video, we're gonna go over all these parts on this table right here and build this Morad 1260 millimeter 420 Pro radiator. So just to go over some of the parts here, I got four of the Noctua 200 millimeter fans. These things are huge. And if you notice, they are the Chromax black swap, which means I have all these little pieces that could change to different colors. We'll figure out which color we're gonna use in a little bit. I got two EKD5 pumps, some of the best in the industry. These are the PWM model, really good stuff. I got the Heat Killer Reservoir, and I also have the Morad 420 Pro or actually it goes on almost any Morad 420. This will um, allow me to put the pumps in. It's the pump top, dual pump top, and it'll allow me to attach it directly to the radiator. I also have the feet that you can buy separately for the Morad. I don't know why these are separate. Sounds standard to me. And right here we have the Coolant temperature sensors that will go on the in and out of this radiator. That will give us the before and after temperature, which should be within one to two degrees of each other if we got everything proportioned correctly. And over here, we have the Coolant Quick Disconnect Fittings. These are the giant mother ones, they're huge. These are the biggest ones, these are the QD4s. On the other side, we got Alpha Cool Radiator Fittings, and we got the Alpha Cool Swivel Right Angle Fittings. The reason why I'm using Alpha Cool is they seem to clamp better on this 1913 tubing. It's, this is one of the biggest tubings you get from EK. It's pretty good, this is the EK Black Tubing, and uh, it works pretty well. I use this in all my stuff. And of course, we got our tools over there that we're gonna use. You only need three tools to build this entire thing. So at the end of this video, you will see this whole thing getting built. So I'm gonna get some gloves on and I'm gonna take you through step-by-step step how we're gonna build this thing up today. All right, so I got my hair up and I got my gloves on, so we are ready to get started. First thing we're gonna do is build the pump system. So the way you can tell which is the in and the out, this hole right here is going to the outside. You can see it's on the outside of this pump um, flow path. That's because it's an impeller and it's pushing outwards. That's how you know it's the out. The in the middle is a suction. So you can see here, the out is feeding into this in. And that's how that this is set up. If you guys have never seen an EKD5 pump, these are actually pretty cool. So I'm gonna take the middle out and you can see if you look real closely that there's like a white ball there. That is a ceramic ball bearing. And that is how this whole thing floats. It's just magnetic. So it just kind of goes inside like that. You see, I just kind of sucked it in and it's magnetically floating there on that ball. So it's really important to never run these pumps dry because they are water lubricated. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of drop that in there. Take the other one, just drop it in. And I want the, this is gonna be mounted on the radiator in this orientation. So I want the labels to be nice and straight. That way it looks nice. All right, so now that this is on, we're going to get our screws and go ahead and screw this down. So what I'm using right now is a three millimeter hex driver. Um, you only need a three millimeter hex driver, a 2.5 millimeter hex driver. And if you're using like uh, EK plugs, you can use one of these little things that usually comes in their plug kit. And I'm going to be using a small adjustable wrench just to tighten down some of the other um, uh, these temperature fittings in a little bit. All right, so we're gonna take our three millimeter driver and get it on our screws. And we're just gonna get all these screws started. We're not gonna go all the way down. We just wanna get them started. Then we're gonna torque them all down evenly a little bit later. All right, so I got all the screws in. I'm just gonna give everything a snug turn. I'm not gonna tighten anything down. That way everything is snugged in the same amount. Again, I'm going in a star pattern going between all around the pump. All right, so I got my torque driver set. This, uh, not torques driver, but it's like a torque limiting screwdriver. Um, it just looks like this. It's from Weira, same brand that makes my other driver. I'm just gonna set this to a certain amount of inch pounds and torque down these bolts. The reason why I'm using this is specifically because I just, you know, because I can, I wanna, I wanna have something that is very consistently torqued. I don't want to be going too far off or too far back. All 
Okay, so I just got done with the last one on here. It's all torqued down. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this away. Uh, when you put away any type of torque device or any type of calibrated torquing device, you always back it down to the lowest setting that it'll go. And that is the proper way to store a torque wrench. So I just put it down to its lowest setting. And now I'm gonna put this away for a later time. All right, so now I'm gonna put the feet on the radiator. Just keep in mind that the holes on the radiator and the holes on the feet are not centered. And it's like that on purpose. So you make sure you line them up correctly. So right now we got it like that. And what you're gonna wanna do is if you get real low here, you can actually see, see how I have the screw poking through the foot? I'm just gonna get it right over the hole and get started. And now you know one is at least in the appropriate orientation for the rest of them. One thing I really like about Heat Killer, the German company, is that they give you nice stainless steel screws. Um, it's just, you know, that one thing that they could have spent more money on, but they didn't. And I mean, I mean, but they did. They could have saved money on, but they didn't. And they gave you the nice screws. On some of these screws, you might wonder why it doesn't seem like the thread's that long. Well, you gotta remember, there's something inside this thing you really don't wanna poke into, the radiator core. So that might be the reason why some of these screws maybe seem kind of shallow, but honestly, they're, 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 it's enough. As long as you got more than two threads on there, usually pretty good. This actually comes with six G1 quarter fittings, three on each part. So we got one on the side right here and two, one here and one here. So three on each side, on the top and the bottom. Um, you can make either or, in or out. I personally like to make the top in and the bottom out. That way it's not fighting gravity going through this. It has 118 feet, four rows of copper tubing going through the middle, right through the middle. You can kind of see it if you look through the light on the edges there. Um, this can accommodate up to 18 140 millimeter fans. But in this case today, we're gonna be using four 200 millimeter fans so that they're nice and quiet. Okay, so now we're gonna finish building the pump before we add it on to the radiator. Now you could have probably done this earlier while you we were working on the pump. I just wanna get the radiator off the table and let it stand the whole time. So we got our reservoir here. It is also another heat killer product. It's pretty cool, pretty good stuff. One thing I will say about this, I've already done this off camera. Um, see the heat killer logo and the way the tubes are and everything? Um, the way for this to work, it's gotta be on like this. So the tubes will line up with that. And that's important, which I'll explain later. They show on the website, I'll flash a picture of how it looks. They show this on the website from directly from Heat Killer, how this is arranged with the special thing going through the bottom and all that. That is the ideal way to do it, but it takes way more parts. And I actually figured out, you can just use one of these AquaLink extending tubes. I'll show you a uh, part in the description below, of course how to use this to get it so it's just a couple of parts. It's way simpler. So this mounting hardware from Heat Killer, it's a little unique. Let me know down in the comments below if there's a better way to do this, but this is the way I found it. You gotta take the res top off completely, then you slide it in right over the aluminum tube bars like that. So it goes in just like that. So we're gonna go ahead and slide these in. and it just goes down like that. And now it'll be mounted in that orientation. And for those of you that are new to water cooling, res is just a short term for reservoir. Max voltage, let me know if I said that right. Reservoir. All right, so that is in there, that is nice. Okay, I'm actually gonna, there we go. And so then we're gonna mount it just like that. All right, so now that this is on, the reason for it is I'm gonna put these two 90s in here and then they're gonna connect like that. And then this right here that I made is gonna connect right here and go to this outlet on the reservoir or the radiator right here. So it's gonna connect like that. Before we do all that, we're gonna go ahead and get this mounted to the radiator. All right, so it's looking more like the radiator system that we want. So this is completely on, this is good. And you know, that's, that's all right, as long as it doesn't come off. <laughs> and you can see the connections are offset. The reason being, you don't want all this mass hitting against each other. That's why the connectors are offset like that. This is what we call a like GPU scaler slash AquaLink thing. 
This particular one happens to be a bits power, but you can use any kind. This particular one is for three to four slots. This did not work in another project I had, so I'm using it here. Using this with two 90 degree fittings, just G1 quarter fittings, nothing too crazy. I'm gonna get these on here like that. And then you can kind of see what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do one of these just like that. And now the top reservoir and the bottom portion are fully connected. And I mean, th that's it. All right, so we got the top of the uh, radiator connected to the bottom of the reservoir, which is feeding into the pump. And then after it goes to the pump, it goes out, then it comes back into the system going into the uh, machine. Now, we're gonna get a makeshift loopy connect right here. Get, so, cause right now this can't operate. It's going into nothing. It can't flow. So we're gonna make a makeshift connector to connect these two together. And then we're gonna get our really nice special coolant which I haven't talked about till now. I'm gonna fill this up and give it a test. So I just got my power supply and I got a leak tester and I got some extra fittings. What we're gonna do first is make a loopy loop. Looks like this. Reason being, if you look here, like I said earlier, it's gonna go into nothing and then it's not gonna work. So we're simply just gonna get these Coolands QD4s that are terminating to uh, 1319. We're gonna go ahead and get these set up real quick. So I got these fully connected like that. I'm just gonna go ahead and do one of these. And now when we bench bleed or test it, it'll be able to flow. But before we do all that, we're gonna do a pressure test the correct way. So this, my friends, is the EK leak tester. It's basically a pump and a gauge. Um, the reason why I like to use this is, you know, before we used to have this, we just YOLO it and get water everywhere if there was a leak. So this way we can do a real test, see if there's a leak. So we're gonna go right to the middle of the green Okay, now we got it there. We're gonna go ahead and close this valve. A lot of people forget to close this valve and it leaks back through the pump. Remember to close this valve. All right, so it's been about five or 10 minutes and the pressure is fine. Now this part I'm really excited about because I'm about to fill this with some of my most favorite coolant. This my friends is the Coolant's electrically insulative coolant. This stuff, is electrically insulative. It won't say it's non-conductive because that's technically impossible, but this stuff will run in the system and last a lot longer and give me a little bit more peace of mind on it not becoming conductive. <sighs> Smells good. Hopefully we don't spill anything. Oh, great. Oh, man, that's the most expensive spill I've had so far. I forget how much one of these things costs, but it's not cheap. It's, it's quite expensive. Oh, doesn't taste good. Actually, no, it tastes pretty good. It's probably really bad for you though. Don't, don't drink coolant, kids. Don't, don't drink coolant, it's bad. So what I did with that was I was just sucking air out of the top. Not recommended, um, especially if you get like coolant in your mouth. Right now we're gonna turn the power supply on and the pumps are gonna activate. And one important thing while you're doing this is to never ever let the reservoir run dry. So we have here the Noctua Chromax NF20, NF-A20 PWM fan. So at first I had no idea how big these were, but they are huge, all right? Look at that. It is not tiny, people. So you guys might be wondering, G, why are you using $40 fans? I'm using these big fans because they have a maximum RPM of 800, and that means that they are gonna be wicked quiet. 
and they are big, so they have a lot of airflow compared to a little one. So this, my friends, is the 200 millimeter fan adapter for the Morad 1260 millimeter. We're just gonna go ahead and open this up. All right, guys, so um, we're gonna add the fans to the bracket before we put it on. Uh, this is totally my first time. I gotta take this back off. Um, we're gonna figure out how to get the fans through all the holes and everything, and we're gonna go ahead and add it to the bracket, then attach the bracket right to the radiator. All right, guys, so this has been a great journey. We just got four Noctua NFA20 uh, 200 millimeter fans. And we got two dual D5 pumps, got a heat killer reservoir, and it's all together. And we, of course, filled it with the electrically insulative coolant. Make sure you don't drink it because it tastes horrible. But uh, make sure you get subscribed, guys, because the next video you're going to see is this being hooked up to the Streamcom Port Royal Killer Dual 3090 test bench with a 5950X all 100% liquid cooled. Of course, none of this was possible without the help of my good friends, the awesome cameraman we have, and of course the Misfit Mining Discord. If you guys should get joined, that is where I am at. If you guys have any questions for me directly or anything like that, go join there. It'll be linked in the description below. You can talk to me directly in my own section and ask me questions there, or you can leave a comment down below if you have any questions about this build. So make sure you get subscribed and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.